not only did you watch this new uh, Joel Cohen adaptation, but you prepared by watching, I think, three other adaptations, right? Yeah. So which ones did you watch? Yeah, well, so um, so it, immediately before we watched the, the Cohen, the Joel Cohen film, uh, I had watched the Polanski version from like 1979 or something. Mm-hmm. The... Orson Welles version. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I like spaced out for a second. The Orson Welles version from like 1948 and an adaptation, a film adaptation of the Royal Shakespeare company's production starring Patrick Stewart. Um, okay. And, and I, the reason I put it that way is because this was a film adaptation that was not made, you know, as a film adaptation, first and foremost, it was a theatrical right. production. It had a run on Broadway. It won some like Tony awards, I think. Um, mm -hmm. and then I guess, I guess as a, a means of documenting it, they adapted it for film. And so it's, 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 it's awesome to watch, but as you're watching it, it's very clear, you know, that the choices that have been made are, are choices for the stage. Um, and the, the performances that you get are performances that, that feel like they're, they're coming off the stage, right. you know? Right. Right. Um, so how would you rank those four adaptations? Uh, including the Cohen one? All let's say rank all Macbeth film adaptations, well, including also, the Cohen I've one also that you have seen, seen. I've also seen the Fassbender the, one, the, fa the Michael Fassbender one. I forget the the name of the director on that, but that starred Michael Fassbender as Macbeth and uh, Cotillard. What what's her name? Mar Marianne Cotillard. Marianne Cotillard, yeah, yeah, as Lady Macbeth. Um, and then uh, there have been some others that are non English adaptations. Um, in particular, oh well, I've seen, oh you know what I have seen Throne of Blood, yeah, yeah because so... you gave me for Christmas one year years ago <laughs> a DVD Criterion Collection is actually my first Criterion DVD that I ever had cool. of uh, of yeah and I haven't watched it since then really but but um, uh, Akira Kurosawa did his own like Japanese um, transposition right. of of. Macbeth. It's not the Shakespeare text, well, but it's sort of the, yeah. that story. Yeah, um, and Toshiro Mifune you know, plays plays this uh, this this Japanese general who is you know the the equivalent of of Macbeth, and it's yeah. it's awesome. It's awesome. But yeah, I'll have to watch it again. It kind of sure. exists because it was because separate... it was before I was really into cinema, but uh -huh. when I watched yeah. that, so I don't think I was able to appreciate it. Yeah, as much. well, it's amazing, but it kind of exists in a separate category because, as do all of the non English speaking Macbeth film mm -hmm. adaptations, because in those instances, the directors are totally liberated from having to deal with the text, you know, and that's right. kind of like one of the, so the kind of central. Yeah, it's. It's 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 like one of the and main... given that Shakespeare got his plots from elsewhere in the first place, I wonder how much you can even say that that sort of thing is like based on Shakespeare or like inspired by Shakespeare. Uh, you know I see. What I'm saying? I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about the the story of Macbeth, but certainly you know. Yeah, Macbeth with... has a previous has previous sources. Okay, yeah, cool. I was looking at that. Yeah, cool. Um, so, how would you rank the actual Macbeth film adaptations you've seen? Yeah, that's a good question. I I think Orson Welles is at the top, and okay. the reason I say that Orson Welles. Yeah, the reason I say that is because it seems to me like anytime you do a film adaptation of Shakespeare, you're dealing with with two things. You're dealing with a lot of things, but but two things in particular. One we've already mentioned is the text, and two is you know, the visual vocabulary film being mm -hmm. of, you know, it's like a truism. Um, and I guess you could disagree with this to some extent it's debatable, but film being primarily a visual medium. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the Orson well, in the Orson Welles adaptation, those two elements, the language and the visuals are just firing on full throttle. Uh -huh. And so I put that at the top. Yeah. Yeah, I watched most of that this afternoon. I still have like 17 minutes left to go. That's but, cool. But well, I liked I, it. Yeah. I think after the first 15 minutes, it's clear, you know, like that sure, this is a sure. masterful adaptation. Right. Um, yeah, I agree. Now, just to like skip right to the bottom, I kind of put the, the Joel Cohen one there <laughs> right <laughs> okay. at the bottom. Because for the same reason, basically, that 
that I, I think it kind of skirts the problem of the language. Yeah. And it kind of fails on the level of, of the visuals. And um interesting. Okay, well I'd agree with the first and I'd like to hear your explanation on this on yeah. the second. Now, you but know, where, where, how's the Polanski? Is that is that okay, good? Okay. So the Polanski one is awesome. But, you know, I I I would put it somewhere in the middle of the list because th there are some issues that I have with it. So like uh for instance, it's it's it, I don't know if it was the first film that Playboy produced or like one of the only films, but it was like produced by Playboy. Hugh Hefner is, oh. is like a uh, executive producer on the film. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's very oh. weird. I guess for a while, Playboy sort of thought it would be a movie studio. A media empire. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and so yeah. so there it's it's not it's not pornographic per se, but there is like kind of a I would call like a pornographic attitude in the film it's very brutal it's very violent um you know whereas like in the orson wells uh version when when uh when uh macbeth sends his soldiers to go slaughter macduff's wife and children you mm -hmm. know the camera kind of mercifully like cuts up as we see the 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 sword coming down on the child yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. um but in the polanski one things are a lot more explicit and uh hmm. and and there's some places where that's successful the final duel between macbeth and macduff is awesome it just feels like very medieval they're like just smacking each other you know in in the armor you know and their swords are just like bouncing off each other until finally mm. macduff gets him in through like an opening in the armor right. and it just feels very right. like gritty and real um uh. But then there are other instances where where the sort of explicitness or the brutality is just kind of like it's just much, you know. Um, this now is, does that playboyism like express itself in like a sexual way in the film, or not, just in terms of how it handles other elements? Yeah, I think it's mostly just in terms of other elements. Uh, to uh, to my recollection, right now, yeah, it's there's some nudity, but it's not in a sexual context. Um, but but for example, um. When Macbeth goes to uh, to visit the witches towards the end of the play, later in the play, um, mm -hmm. to sort of like find out the future from them some more, right? Um, it's not just the three witches he ends up stumbling upon, but like a whole coven of these, you know, mostly older, sort of misshapen ladies, but they're all naked, um, and so yeah. it's like. There you also, I think, see some of Polanski's uh, uh, interests, oh, sure. you know, because Polanski is very interested in the occult uh, across his body of work. Um, and, oh, really? Not just Rosemary's Baby? No, no. There's 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 several other movies, too. And he's also, um, you know, kind of perverted. I mean, like, he's he is perverted. Like, he, he had to flee the United <laughs> yeah. States. But but his filmmaking, <laughs> right. his, his, his movies are yeah. kind of per perverted in a way, too, you know, yeah. and so... So I think that handling of the occult in in Polanski's is is a disservice to the the, the play because it's kind of it just puts it out there. You know what I mean? It just kind of like it's very frank and not shrouded in mystery in the way that Orson Welles, for instance, in his like you never even see the witches. They're always their faces are always yeah. blackened and and yeah. you just see their outlines and and so. Right you know, with, with, with Orson Welles, those elements are handled much more poetically, much more metaphorically, you know, it's like, it's the fog or the wind or the bubbling, you know, there's a lot of imagery. Um, it's their silhouettes. Whereas mm -hmm. in, in, uh, uh, Polanski's it's like, a bunch of naked women around a cauldron, you know, putting in like the liver of a blaspheming Jew. And it's like, you know, uh, just very, uh, very in your face and just robbed of any of its kind of mystery is the wrong, maybe the wrong word to use for it, but it, 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 in its explicitness, it somehow reduces it. Do you, does that make sense? Um, yeah. it kind of cheapens it. It trivializes it. It almost, there's like a fascination 
that I think is pornographic or, or at least analogously pornographic. In this- well, it sounds like a workman like fascination where you're like, how is this actually, how does this actually work? Like of so- like, uh, like somebody who wants to show a realistic occult ceremony or something. Yeah. Does that make, is that sort of getting at I it? I think like- so. I think so. Whereas I think that Orson Welles has a sensitivity to the spiritual reality of what all of these things represent. I think uh-huh. Wells, I mean, Wells just straight up puts the prayer to St. Michael in the film. You know? Yeah, which is an anachronism. I like that. It's a nice bit of anachronism because yeah. it was invented by Leo the Thirteenth. Right, right. Yeah, like know. hundreds of years later. But like, yeah. Um, but 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 I think that it's an it's a nod on Wells's part that yeah. you know that this is that these are he's working in images of something that can't be imaged something that like goes deeper, you know? And right. so, so it's like a lot more troubling, um, but not, yeah. but it doesn't wound you in the way that seeing some of these more explicit depi- depictions in a Polanski piece, like I felt wounded afterwards. I just felt like, ugh, I don't want to like carry this around with me. That was like brutal. Um, yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. Uh, some others, uh, some other film ad- adaptations do sort of venture into the realm of, of the sexual. Uh, so um, the the Fassbender, Macbeth, uh, I can only recommend with, you know, the qualification of, you know, that there is like some sexual stuff in there, um, which is annoying. Uh, but otherwise, right. you know, that's, that's a, a striking adaptation in its own right. And sure. I, I think, you know, if I... You know, I I don't know how how well that was received, like sort of critically, um, yeah. but but I certainly think that it's a better addition to the 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 you know yeah the canon of Shakespeare film adaptations than this present Macbeth. I see. Yeah. 